Hey there, welcome back to Richard's Record Roundup. Got another stack of LPs here to share with you. No 45s today, nothing obscure, no obscure formats I should say. Um, some of these I've had for a little while, and um, but I just haven't played them yet. Um, I just cleaned this stack, so usually until I clean them, I won't listen to them, and so they've remained in a box. Some of them I did get recently, but um, so anyway, I'd like to share with you what I've got. I picked up this Carpenter's Now and Then album, early 70s. It's interesting because it's not only a gatefold cover, but it is a trifold cover. It's got portraits of both Carpenter's and some uh, stuff in the middle there that has absolutely nothing to do with the songs on it. On the other side it has a I think that's a Porsche or something. Um, Richard Carpenter was a, is a huge automobile fan, has quite an extensive classic Chrysler collection. Although this does not resemble any Chrysler to me so I really don't know what kind of car it is. But anyway this whole album you look on it it does not have anywhere on it what songs are in it. So I'm not sure when uh, somebody originally purchased it how they knew it. it must have had a sticker or something on it um, on the uh, cellophane but you have to actually pull the inner sleeve out and then it lists all the songs plus the lyrics which is kind of nice. Pretty cool album. It has some um, it's it's uh, the, the big hits on here are Sing, Sing a Song, Yesterday Once More um, and then there's a bunch of uh, early 60s uh, songs that both Richard and Karen uh, did the vocals on. Um, I don't think any of these were released as singles that I can recall. But uh, most of them they actually did a pretty good job on. I mean, um, they did a cover of the Beach Boys, Fun, 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 um, The End of the World, Johnny Angel, that was pretty good, The Do Run Run. Dead Man's Curve, The Night Has a Thousand Eyes, and Our Day Will Come. Oh, and One Fine Day. A couple of them I wasn't too crazy about, but all in all, pretty good. She's got a fabulous voice, so quite a loss when she died. Uh, another one I got here is uh, Veep Records. Never heard of this uh, label. Distributed by United Artists, so could be perhaps... Uh, one of their sub labels. It's the best of Little Anthony and Imperials. It is um, unknown issue. Um, just looking at it, I would say mm, it's probably 60s. Could be early 70s. Really, really nice album. A lot of good hits on here. Sounds excellent. It's in the vinyl's in excellent shape on it. Pretty good album. I'd recommend it if you're ever out at the thrift store or something or a garage sale pick it up if you like little anthony um i picked up quite a few of these actually last year david cassidy i'm not sure i didn't look up to see actually how many albums he released but i think i picked up at least a half a dozen so it's got to be close to <laughs> most of his uh 70s release stuff um i haven't listened to this one yet but it's a live album cassidy live <laughs> Um, I don't think there's any songs on here that he actually released as singles that jumps out at me, but a lot of the songs are songs you've heard before, just covered them. Um, that. This one I have not listened to yet either. This one's still got the factory shrink wrap on it. I mean, it's open, but it's still, you know, somebody actually left it protective shrink rack bonnet so it's in really really nice condition um, never heard of this label before either harmony I'm sure it's probably something from the uh, 60s or early 70s it's a uh, Frankie Lane he was a very popular singer in his day and um, songs on these are like uh, Western songs now, uh, I'm thinking this may have been a, uh, a re-release that they uh, could have uh, changed the name of the album on. Then again, it could be just, uh, maybe it was one called High Noon, but I know he had another one with, with Western songs on it. 
But uh, again, have not listened to this one yet. But he was a he was a pretty good singer. It's kind of largely forgotten now. Um, this one, Anna Maria Alberghetti. Um, I think this one's from the fifties. And the main reason I grabbed this one was because it's in such nice shape. I've seen uh, this album before, where it was all torn, you know, split on the on the the jacket and it's all a uh, lot of wear on the on the uh, picture here this is like looks like almost like it was printed yesterday it's um in fact it's got a sticker on the back here that somebody must try to sell it at a garage sale or something or or some kind of record shop for twenty dollars um no, i wouldn't pay that for it i think i paid a i'm not even sure what i paid for it i don't know if i paid a quarter for it or if uh this was one I bought in like a bulk purchase with something else. I have not listened to this one yet. Um, I'm not even sure if I'll even like it. And I don't recognize any of the names of any of the songs on it, so who knows. But it's just kind of a neat one. If at worst I could hang it on the wall as a record room decoration. This one is a re-release. This is an MCA Records uh, Rainbow Label uh, re-release. It's two. It's a two record album, Mamas and the Papas 20 Golden Hits. This also still has the shrink wrap on it, again, open. But they originally recorded on uh, ABC Dunhill Records. So, I mean, just that alone lets you know that's not the original. Now, I don't know if the original came in a gatefold cover. This is just one sleeve, and they're really jammed in there, these two albums. So, um, but it's got all the hits you could possibly want from the uh, Mamas and the Papas, you know, California Dreamin', Monday Monday, Dedicated to the One I Love, blah, blah, blah. You name it, it's on there. Um, have not listened to this yet. The, uh, the vinyl looks pristine on it, so I'm expecting it'll sound pretty good. This one I actually grabbed at a, a yard sale or something before George Michael died. Um, so it wasn't like, a, ooh, George Michael died, I'm going to buy this album. Um, for uh, you know some kind of investment purpose or flip it on eBay. Now I actually like Wham. Um, I bought Wake Me Up Before You Go Go on the 45 when it was new. So I never did buy the album. I wasn't a big album person back in the day. I mean I had KTEL albums and uh, you know very 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 rarely would I buy any sort of album. If I did it was usually like a greatest hits type thing. I, I, I wasn't a big uh, fan of just getting the artist's album um, but I know I like this because I like Wham and um, the only issue with this is you may have seen me earlier in the video I threw something off this side it has a uh, a uh, protective paper jacket inside here for the record and it's 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 almost split into two pieces of paper so like I said it's not like collectible grade and I'm just going to tape it up now here's a good one the Mills Brothers greatest hits um, this is on dot records and I can't remember how long dot was around I want to say they were gone hmm, I want to say by the early 60s but I could be wrong on that um, so I mean this looks pretty old uh, I'm going to say this is probably late 50s or very early 60s. And every Dot record that I've had, especially 78s, sound really nice. Really good fidelity on them. So I'm expecting this to have some pretty good sound. Plus, I love the Mills Brothers. And this has got all their great hits on it. So how can you go wrong? Not to mention the, uh, again, I check all my records before I buy them. A, to make sure that it has the correct record inside the sleeve. Believe it or not, that happens quite often where you'll open it up and it'll have the wrong record. In fact, there was two records that I bought I didn't even realize, uh, unless it was something I did and not realizing it when I cleaned them. Uh, luckily, I bought both albums. There was a, a volume one and a volume two, and when I went to go play them, the volume two was in volume one and vice versa. Uh, so. As you can see, unless, again, unless I did that, it's possible. Plus, I mean, 
It could have totally wrong record in there. I mean, this could be like a Partridge Family album or something in here. Who knows? Or you know, something totally unrelated. But anyway, the vinyl, uh, I also check all the vinyl before I buy them to make sure they're not too scratched up. I'm a little finicky about that because who wants to listen to a record with a bunch of scratches and pops and skips and whatever? Um, this one, <laughs> this is one I got also the same time I bought the um, David Cassidy albums. There was a rummage sale at a church. Uh, they have it twice a year, and all the records are 25 cents. And there we had a bunch of Partridge Family and David Cassidy and Sean Cassidy. And uh, so, I mean, for a quarter, I just loaded up. And this was in one that was uh, in the uh, bins full of records, the, the Brady Bunch Kids. And yes, this does have the songs that you expect from the show on it, Sunshiny Day and um, what's the other one that's real popular? Um, keep on, keep on. Can't read these Rebus kind of things here. Um, that's supposed to be the names of the songs, but I don't have enough patience to sit there and figure them out with the picture. But if you like the Brady Bunch songs or the Brady Bunch show, you'll like the album. Again, haven't listened to it yet. Uh, two left here. Um, Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole was awesome. Um, I have quite a few uh, Nat King Cole LPs. Uh, so far, I have managed not to buy one that I've already had. Um, he's got a really nice voice, and uh, it's a shame that he died so young. Um, this one has Ramblin' Rose, Goodnight Irene, Your Cheatin' Heart. He's got a lot of pretty good songs on here. But he just has that kind of smooth, kind of soothing voice. Um, so again, I haven't listened to this one yet. Excellent condition vinyl. I'm sure I'll like it. Last one, another Dot album. This one's a stereo. It's even got a sticker from the factory on here. Dot Stereophonic Ultra High Fidelity. Um, this is Pat Boone. The uh, poor man's Elvis, I guess. <laughs> Not really, but, uh, you know, he was like the squeaky clean version of, uh, of the day. And um, he also has a pretty good voice. You know, he could be a little, uh, oh, vanilla. But, um, you know, he didn't sell millions of records because he couldn't sing. Um, this one is uh, Pat Boone sings songs by Irving Berlin. So, I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, Irving Berlin, Irving Berlin was a uh, very prolific and uh, famous uh, writer. Um, so, uh, songwriter. So, I, I'm, I'm assuming that um, I probably know a lot of these songs, even if I don't recognize the names of the, uh, the titles. So, I'm just not 100% sure if I'm going to enjoy Pat Boone singing them. But again, I kind of grabbed this because... A, it's an early stereo, you know, it's probably like really early or really late 50s, maybe really early 60s. Um, I should probably do a little bit of research before I do these videos so I can give you a little bit more trivia. But anyway, um, and again, pretty nice cover like that uh, Anna Maria Albergetti one. Um, you know, it's, 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 I like grabbing early albums like this that are in really nice shape they're not split and the vinyls in like very you know pristine looking condition with almost no scratches so again something i like to add to my collection so that about does it for this uh edition of richard's record roundup i hope you enjoyed that i hope you saw something you liked uh, feel free to subscribe more videos will be coming and have a good day and thank you for coming Yeah. <laughs>